Hello, my name is Kyle Vernon. I'm the creator of the Motorcycle Awareness Campaign website. I'm going to show you how to add articles to the chapters in this video. Now the front page that you're looking at right now does use the same application to add articles, but there's a difference at the top right here where it says Leadership Conference Add Speakers to Agenda. That's done in a different module, so it doesn't work quite the same as the other chapters. What we're concerned about is the chapters being able to add their own articles, so we're going to go over that. As you see down here, there's a login, and this is where you're going to access the articles, or where you're going to add the articles, actually. You should have an account created for you if you have permission to add articles to your section. You're going to hit Login. Now you're logged into the inside of the site. Not much looks different, but if you notice down here in the login area, you'll see add new item, my page, my account, and moderate comments to my published items. Uh, we won't concern ourselves with much of this. We're just worried about adding a new article to your section. Uh, you might want to look into comment, uh, moderating the comments to published items because people will uh, make comments about the articles that you've published. They might say things that you might not want, you know, seen out there, like profanity or something to that effect. And that's where that comes in handy. But let's just add an article right now. And click on Add New Article, and a new dialog box pops up. Now you could treat this like it's an email. It works basically the same way. Uh, if you think about it that way, then it won't be too confusing. It won't be too difficult. And as you see, it's a simple dialog box with three sections. You have a title section, you have the content section, and you have the details section. This is about the article and the author of the article. Well, first, we're going to go to the title, and you're going to add a title just like you're adding a subject to your email. So let's add, this is our new article. Okay, now you don't have to worry about formatting on this. I mean, you do have to worry about uppercase or lowercase letters, but uh, the CSS behind the site, the CSS that the site points to uh, for display will determine how big this is going to show up, what color it's going to show up, and that's the job of the CSS. The cascading style sheet determines everything on the website and how it will look. So don't concern yourself with what it looks like when you type it into this area. The title alias below it will automatically fill out so you don't need to add anything there. Now you might want to add some tags to the site like whatever your article is about if it's about motorcycles or specific motorcycles or brands you might want to put those in there separately uh, separated by a comma so when you're searching the site itself it'll be easier to find. That's a good tool to use. Also it helps with the search engines. Over here you see where it says published yes is defaulted to yes. There's no need to put it on no unless you do not want that article to be seen. Now for our purposes we want the article to be seen and I suggest you leave it as yes so when you publish the article you can see it and you won't have to go back to the back end to publish it. We aren't going over the back end processes right now, just the front end. So leave it on yes. Is it featured? No. Leave that unchecked because it, we don't need that little featured icon on there. It serves no purpose other than to say it's featured. Category. When you log into the front of the site, you will be limited to the categories that you have access to. I set access to myself for Baton Rouge Chapter, and as you can see, everything is grayed out except for the section for Baton Rouge Chapter. Select that. It will not let you publish it if you do not select the section. Now, we go on to the section where you add the article. As you see above here, there are these tabs, and you don't want to mess with those tabs. They do function, and they are part of this this. Uh, tool, but we're not using this because it'll just confuse matters. Uh, we're going to use this tool right here to add images when we're ready to add images, but first things first. Let's type in your article. You can copy and paste it, or you can type it in just like you're typing an email. If you do copy and paste it, you might want to remove the formatting on it. If you're doing it in Word, you might want to move it to Notepad, and then take off the formatting and paste it in here. In other words, it's going to bring the Word formatting into this, into this window, and it's going to distort it because the CSS is already telling it to do one thing, and you're trying to tell it to do another thing. That's what all these other tools here are for. Okay, so let's type in some text here. This is the text for our test article. All right. For the Baton Rouge section under the category. Okay, we're at a second line. Okay, so if we were to save this right now, you will have created an article for the front page of your section. Um, but we want to add a little bit more to it, and I want to show you a couple other things that you could do with it briefly. 
These tools will allow you to emphasize things on the site. We're going to emphasize Baton Rouge right now, or Baton Rouge section. Let's do the whole thing. We're going to make it bold. We're going to make it italic, as you see up here. And then we're going to go and choose a color for it. We're going to say it's going to be green. And there you've just made it bold, italic, green. So you do have some formatting options on this particular tool, a lot of them. But we don't want to overuse this. We want to keep everything fairly consistent. So if you want to add emphasis to certain words, phrases, sentences, uh, you can do that. But don't do too much because we don't want it to look like a circus poster. All right, we're going to add an image to this. We're going to go right in front of this first letter on the first line, and we're going to put our cursor right in front of it. We're going to go to this icon right here in this bottom center. It's the green icon that says Insert and uh, Edit Image. And click on that, and you're going to get another tool. Now, this tool is a little bit different than what you might be used to seeing. It has a properties section at the top, a browse section at the bottom. The browse allows you to find where you're going to be putting your images and uh, how you're going to be selecting your images. And I'm going to show you how to use this right now. If you look over here under the folders area, you'll see there's a graphics area. Now this is where I, I try to put little subfolders in here and put the images for each folder or uh, images for each section in their particular folder. We do not have a Baton Rouge folder, so we're going to create one. I'm going to click on graphics. And you see that the list of all those are, are, are listed here. We're going to click on it, make sure we got it. And we're going to go over here to this first icon right here. And this is the folder, new folder. So you're going to click on that, and you're going to name that new folder. I'm going to call it Baton Rouge. You can leave a space there. It'll automatically put an underscore in there to make sure it's uh, compatible. Okay, you see Baton Rouge is right there with the underscore. You'll click on it. And click on it again. If it won't open up here, we'll go to the other place here. We can go right over here and do the same thing, and it'll open it up as a new empty folder. All right, there you go. You have an empty folder, no files. We'll go here to upload them. This is the second icon in the middle over here on this side, and it gives you the upload tool. We're going to go to Add. Now, Add's going to look for images on your computer. Okay, so I put an image called a bonita on my computer. It's a picture of me holding up a bonita. I used to do a lot of fishing. I'm going to choose it. And it's going to put it in here in the queue. Now, if you wanted to put 10, image, 10 images in this folder, you'd have to do add one at a time. You can't select all of them, unfortunately, but you can put them in one at a time in the queue and then upload the whole queue. But right now, we're going to just put the one image in there, and we're going to hit upload. And you can see this moving around here. It's going to give you this little green, a little check mark with a green circle around it. It tells us that the image has been uploaded. Now, if you make your files too big, it won't upload. So if you have a problem uploading images, nine times out of ten your files too big you want to keep it 1024 by 768 pixels at 72 dpi that's plenty large enough for anybody to see it uh... and it's plenty large enough or small enough for the site to handle anything bigger than that you're risking it uh... not accepting it so let's go on ahead and hit cancel the image is here it'll be bolded in black and you'll see a little preview of the image over here and when you want to add it to your article you just click on it and as you can see the properties fills in so you can see the URL where the image has been added. You can see an alternate text right here. You might want to type in something that's a little bit more relevant. And I'll put in Webmaster Catches Bonita. And a search engine can see the alt text, and they'll know, you know, well, there's a, a Bonita on this site, so, you know, it, it helps with the search engines. Also helps describe what the image is when people mouse over to pop up and say Webcaster, uh, Webca Webmaster Catches a Bonita. It shows you the dimension of the image here. And it's proportional. Now, we're going to make this image smaller as a thumbnail on this article. You don't want to show the full image on this part of the site because it's just too big. So we're going to make it down to 150 pixels. And it's going to drop down proportionately. You don't have to do too much math here. You can go to the next one. It'll automatically fill out the previous one. See, as I clicked on the alignment, the dimensions actually straightened out. So it's not 400, whatever it was, 448, I believe. It's 105. And you go down here and click left. It's going to align the images to the left. Now, you see here in the preview, it's showing you exactly what you're doing with that image. That image is aligned to the left. The text is wrapping around it. But there is no border around this image and no margin around the image. So the text is butted up right against it. So we want to change that. We're going to go to margin. And we're going to add 10 pixels all the way around. It says equal value, so all of these are going to be 10 pixels. I'm going to go to the next one, and that will happen. You'll see they got a little margin going around there, and the text is still wrapping around it. But the image is not butted up against there. Now we're going to add the border here. You go to one, nice thin border, in a solid, and if you go over here to color, you can click on the little cube there and a little square, and it'll have a, a tool that will let you select the color that you want to use on it. I'm using black, and you'll see there's a black border around this image. And we're ready to go right now, but I'm a little particular, and I like my images to butt up against the top in line with the text. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deselect equal values and make that top 
number zero. So there's no margin at the top, and it's going to move that image up. Now, when I click anywhere else, you'll see how that image moved up to the top in line with the top text, and that's the way I like it. So we're going to go on ahead and click Insert, and it's going to show up on the site just like you did it, right there. Okay? Now, we want this image to pop up so we can see it at actual size. So we're going to go ahead and click this image, and you'll see this area right here just grayed out. So you got the image part to grayed out, which when you select it, it'll allow you to edit the image, and this area grayed out. So when you select it, you can make a pop-up, and it's very easy. Click on it. It'll open up a different dialog box, and it'll show you what images you're going to be using to pop up. Now, this is where the image is. It's the thumbnail image, but it's just been scaled. It hasn't been uh, actually physically reduced down to size, so when you select it and put it here, it's going to pop up at original size. So you copy it and paste it into the top one where it says pop-up image and you say insert. Okay, and we're pretty much ready to go. Now, the last thing we're going to look at is where it says details over here. Now, as you signed in, whatever your name is, that's going to be the author of the site. Now, maybe you're putting in an article for somebody else. If you're doing that, then you might want to change the name that's displayed as the author. So what you would do is you go down here and I'm going to put John Doe. Now, John Doe is going to display as the author of this particular article instead of my name. If you leave it blank, your name will show up. If you want to change your name to something else, then you can do that as well. The access level is going to remain at public. The creation date is going to remain the same. And if you, the, starting, the start publishing date can remain the same. Or if you want this image or this article to, to show up next month sometime instead of right now, you could put in a future date down there, and that's when it'll show up. Now, you don't have the same flexibility on the front end as you do if you do it on the back end, because you can determine when the, the actual article will end displaying and when it'll begin displaying. You could put in a whole month's or a whole year's worth of articles if you'd like to, and they'll display as these times come uh, on a schedule. Uh, but you can't do that here. And there's a couple other things you could do on the inside that you can't do here. Down at the bottom here, you'll see some more icons here. Leave those alone. You don't even need to mess with those. Okay, we're ready to make this article happen. So we're going to go on ahead and hit save. And the dialog box will refresh with a little blue a bar at the top saying the item has been saved. Right now, this article is on the site in your section. So we're going to close this out. And we're going to go have a look. I'm going to go on ahead and log out. All right, I'm going to go to the Baton Rouge area. You didn't necessarily have to log out, but that's what I'm going to do anyway. And you're in the section for the Baton Rouge chapter. And you see our article has showed up here. Uh, we have uh, this, this is our new article. We have John Doe as the author. We have the picture here where he wanted it in the article's first line, second line, the bolding, everything is there. If you click on the picture, it will blow up and it will reduce down. Okay, now. That's how you add an article to your section. We're going to go on ahead and remove this article. And from the front end, you can't really delete it. But what you can do, we'll log back in. We will go to your section. We will go to your article. And as you see above your article, it says edit item right here. Right above the dotted line. Just like it has down here for the Kids Safety Expo at Cortana Mall. Edit item. That would allow you to edit that particular item. We're going to edit this item because we don't want it to display. It's just a test. So we're going to go ahead and edit the item. And what we're going to do is say publish no. We're going to save that. Okay, and it says item saved up at the top on the blue bar. Now what you did was you unpublished the item. The item is still there. If you go to the back end, you will see it. And it will just say it's unpublished. And if you wanted it to show up again, you just simply click publish. But we don't want this on here, so we're going to actually go into the back end and delete it, but not during this tutorial. This just shows you how you can take it off of the site if you do not want to see it, just unpublish it. But you will no longer have access to it unless you get to the back end, and we haven't gone over that just yet. Okay, so we'll just close this out, and you'll see how I unpublished it. We'll log out and go to the section. Scroll down and you see it has gone. It is no longer being published on the front of the site. Now I will go in as an admin to the back of the site and delete that particular article because we no longer need it. That's how you make an article for your section. That's how you add articles to the website. It's very simple. If you have any questions, you can give me a call or you can email me. Warren will have my email address and my phone number. Thank you very much.